Good morning, modern steaders. It's raining out this morning. Our garden beds are starting to show more and more. See them peeking through the snow. We got garlic planted in these two beds. Can't wait till the snow melts off of those and we can see how the garlic's doing. Have a good day at school. Okay. Love you. Love you. I'll see you this afternoon. Yeah. Sit. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Love, you. Love you. Whoa! You girls are ready to go this morning, huh? Pretty soon we'll be able to bring all the chickens into New York City now. Now that we have no roosters, and that once the weather gets nicer, we can transport these ladies to New York City. We've been getting a lot of people asking us lately what it costs and what goes into shipping a goat. So today we're going to talk about that and Danelle from Weedem and Reap is going to be doing a video on what it takes to ship the goat. She dealt with the end of getting the hope ready to go on the flight so I'm going to put a link right here for that video. My guess is you girls aren't going to want to come out, it's raining out. You girls ready to eat? I know, Hope. You want to come out? Hold on. I gotta get the girls fed so that way they don't headbutt you as much. Now you can come out. I know, you're ready to be with the other goats. Come on out. Come on out. You gotta come out here? Hey Willow, come here, come here. There, Willow can get a little bit of grain without the other goats getting it on her. Hope, oh, that's hers. She's not gonna, you're gonna fall, Hope. Oh, my crazy goat. You can't get in there and eat her grain. Here, you want some chaffe? Hope, oh, you want some chaffe? Chaffe. Good girl. The way to your hot's the chaff, hey, huh, Hope? Yeah. Is that some good grain? Make sure you're getting plenty of feed for those babies you're growing. What are you doing? Well, it's not gonna like it if you steal her grain. let you out now. You can go get your hay. Willow's not being nice. She's biting Hope's ears now. Did you see that? Willow. She's like, I'm going to keep my distance. Be nice. You ain't scared of anything, Hope, are you? You like getting in that feeder, Hope? You're crazy. I thought we'd discuss why we got Hope from Arizona. Danelle and her family over at Weedem and Reap have become friends of ours. We watch them on YouTube, we've connected, and we've been able to see her goats grow up. And Tilly, her mother, is from Champion Milk Lines. Right now she's putting out half a gallon of milk a day. And this is her first time freshening, her first time having a babies and producing milk. That is a lot of milk for a goat. And that's especially a lot of milk for a goat that's first time freshening. It's a lot of milk for a Nigerian dwarf goat. If these goats are smaller, they eat half as much food as a full size goat. So a half a gallon of milk, that's a lot of milk for our family. So we knew we could get a goat from Danelle, and we knew she had awesome bloodline, and we knew she had a great personality. For us picking out a goat, we weren't just worried about what kind of goat it was, how much milk it produced. We wanted a goat that'd be friendly, 
and that would get along with us and we'd get along with it and just have fun with it. Part of raising goats versus cows for us is their personality. A goat is more like a dog. They're more fun, they're smaller, they're neater. So we were able to come across the hope. We were really excited. Flying her in from Arizona also gives us the opportunity to bring new bloodlines to our area, which is really exciting as well. We'll be able to start breeding her with other goats and then her kids and then starting our bloodlines with that. Are you coming over? This is what I mean about goats personality. Yes. So friendly. When you're shipping an animal, it goes by their crate size for the price of it. You get the crate, then they allow so much weight. But also for the crate, the animal needs to be able to stand up, have two or three inches above their ears, and turn around. So you gotta make sure the crate is sized right. You need the right particular crate. I'll show you a second what crate we got. We ordered a Sky Kennel off of Chewy.com. From all of my research, the Sky Kennels are what Delta Cargo allows. The other nice thing about the kennel right now is we're able to use it as her pet igloo and she can sleep in it at night, getting her acclimated to our temperatures. When it comes to the price of shipping Hope, she's a smaller goat, which fortunately for us works out. The shipping rate goes off of the size of the crate. So this is a medium crate, and the medium crate costs $381 to ship. We had Hope shipped from Phoenix, Arizona to Manchester, New Hampshire. And when I asked about getting our ship to a different airport, they said the price was the same. As long as she gets shipped in the lower 48 of the US, there's a standard shipping rate. Which makes it easier to know that if you're shipping an animal, hey, this is what it's gonna cost me. This crate was 381. The small crate was 270. She was too big for the small crate. Those are the only two sizes that I know of the prices on. My guess is if you're doing a standard size breed, you're gonna to have to go with the intermediate kennel or the large kennel. I'll put a link to Danelle's video from Weed and Reap right here. You can click over and see what they had to do on their end to get Hope ready to ship that day and before. I wish we could leave you out full time with the other goats, Hope, but they're still too mean. And you're not big enough yet, girl. One of the really nice things about getting a goat from a friend is you know its backstory. I know all about Danelle and her farm. I know all about Danelle's goats. I know about Tilly. I know about what her goats do, how they're taken care of, and how they treat them, and the goat's personality. And that's huge to us. So it's very exciting, and we are so appreciative that we're able to get a goat from Danelle and her family. The other thing with starting a goat dairy herd is it takes time. You gotta wait for the goats to get old enough to breed them. And then once you breed them, it still takes five months before they have babies. And then once they have babies, they gotta give the babies their milk for a while. And then you wean the babies and then you get milk. It's a process. So for us starting that process, we wanna make sure we get great lines and keep building the herd we, the way we want to. Oh yeah guys, I didn't get to show you. I got all the fence up later yesterday. I'm not sure if the chickens will come out today with the rain, but we'll see. You girls coming out? We left New York City with our windows down. We couldn't see the trees and it was too damn loud. I will stand on your border. What do you think, Moose? Huh? What do you yeah, think? We left New York City Ladies. Up right there. I don't know if it's showing up on camera. It's probably about three feet tall. This is why I don't like putting out a lot of hay and straw out for the chickens to come out during the winter. The hay, straw, wood chips act as a super insulator. And this pile of ice now is gonna last so long. If we would have put hay and straw out here throughout the whole run area, we'd have two or three feet of snow and ice for probably almost another month. Right, Moose? Okay, girls, enjoy your day. Being outside, you're gonna love it. I'm 
so not used to letting the chicken down. I almost forgot to open up their door. That would have been good. Pluto, you look sad. You're not liking the rain today? Come on, let's go in. I don't know if you can see in there, but it is lined up. We can see daylight. See a few strings. There we go. I'm thinking the chickens might like playing with this. Gutter system's working. We'll rinse off some cabbage. <laughs> Girls, I got you a cabbage. What do you think? Drill a hole right here. Go. I think that's a good height. Yeah. Go ahead, ladies. No? All right, we'll come back out when Olivia gets home and we'll see what you think. Guess we can shut that. I'll let that rain barrel fill up and we'll be able to start watering the chicks with this. Whispers of pines, I hear them sing. 
You want to play? What a rainy, muddy day. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how it'd be rainy and muddy though than snow. Yes, me too. You girls gotta be nice to hope when we let her out. Hey Willow. Hey Hope. You ready to come out for a little bit? Come on out. Come on! What are you doing? Come on out! Oh, Figaro. It's raining out, Hope. What are you gonna do? <laughs> she likes it. Oh, Whoop. she even jumps over the stream. Come see Livy's. Oh! Oh, your foot was stuck, Hope. I'm glad we got it. Whew. Your foot's got to get bigger so it don't get stuck in there again. Oh, that little crack right there? Yeah, that one right there. She got her foot stuck in. <laughs> oh, Hope, you silly goat. Is that good in there? Don't lose a boot. I'm trying to get out, and then both my feet got stuck. The goats from New Hampshire are all hiding inside. And the goat from Arizona, who's not used to this weather, is outside in the hay feeder. It's raining out right now, Livies, but yet there's icicles hanging off that rope. What? what? Explain that. Does that make any sense? No. And it's like it's yeah. pretty hard there. What the heck? That's so bizarre. Mm -hmm. Hope, does that make sense to you? Huh? Does that make any sense? I don't see ice anywhere else. Is that ice? Nope, that's just water. So it makes no sense. I'm gonna go back in. I'll give you some fresh hay in the back area. Oh, you want to eat my? Big girl, you wet? You gonna come back in with us? How big stretch? Oh my goodness, it's so wet. The, both the times that I asked him if he was wet, he meowed at me. He did. Yeah. You gonna follow us? Big girl, come on. You wet? Come You dogs ready to get muddy? Sit. Yeah, I think so. The king's trying to come in. Okay, go. You look like drowned rats, y'all wet. Y'all wet.
hear the rain. Oh, Figaro, you're a riot. I don't smell skunk. It's not very nice out at all this afternoon. Look at all those eggs. Nine eggs just out of this one coop. Says just under a half inch of rain today. We've had a few people asking us about our weather station. They wanted to see the outside part. That is right there on top of the pole. The very tippity top is what tells you the wind speed. On the back, there is a tail, and that tail will move and tell you wind direction. On the top of the platform there's a cup that collects the rainwater and it dumps it out i'll have a link in the description down below to our amazon store if you go on there a lot of the products that we use and recommend we have that there and it is an affiliate link it doesn't cost you anything but if you purchase anything on the site we get i think two to three percent commission depending on the item does it smell good tanner no and then I forgot to turn the camera on during dinner time. Sorry guys, that lasagna Gina made was delicious. We haven't had a lasagna in a long time. I want to challenge all of us, instead of focusing on the stressful parts or what could go wrong let's for like the next month focus on the possibilities and what we want the outcome to be see how that changes our outlook on life leave it in the description down below if you think that'll be a good idea and if you've tried doing it or not yet I know I've been focusing on it for the last few months and it's been amazing such a great mind shift so thanks for coming along on our journey with us guys you are a true blessing to us in our homestead and we'll see you right back here in the next video at lumna acres a guide to modern homesteading self-sufficiency and freedom